in more traditional media, content is either regulated or there are norms about what you would say or not say, do or not do. Um, the thing about the user-generated uh, content of this nature, things like anorexia sites, suicide sites, etc., race hate sites, is it's, it's not regulated in the same way. Sometimes it's not actually directed particularly at children, but nevertheless children can find those sites and they're not illegal or banned. There are lots of public anxieties about the kinds of risks that might uh, be associated with using the internet and we wanted to get a measure of which of those were more or less common and which children are encountering which of the risks. So we interviewed 23,000 children over the spring and summer in 23 countries um, investigating first of all the way in which they use the internet and the opportunities it offers them and then homing in on questions of risk and possibly questions of harm. Some of these are uh, contact risks as in meeting people online um, and uh, perhaps then going off to meet them, off, uh, meet them offline. Then there's uh, other things like um, bullying um, by other children or by other people uh, online, getting sent sexual messages, um, a really wide variety of activities that might cause harm to the child. Despite the many anxieties about the internet, most children are not reporting uh, risks or certainly not reporting being upset by what they find. Most of them are um, presumably therefore happily exploring and doing their schoolwork and communicating with their friends in a really positive way. You know, th these children do a lot. We gave, for instance, a list of 17 things and said, do you do any of these? The schools will be uh, very pleased to know that the top thing is um, using the internet for schoolwork. Um, but there are some surprising ones, like one that comes quite high up the scale is reading the news online. Now, I can imagine adults doing this, but it was as a surprise when you say half of children say, claim they're reading the news online as well. One of the things that I guess for me was surprising, what I found surprising, was that the levels of bullying were quite low. And we asked the children not only for these experiences on the internet, but we also asked them whether they had encountered them offline. And you could see that uh, these negative experiences or the ne you know, this kind of harmful encounters with other young people mostly, especially in the case of bullying, it's still offline, face to face with their friends, that this is far more prevalent and causes more harm. Face to face interaction when you're a teenager is quite, um, you know, it, it has its own risks. Um, there are lots of opportunities for embarrassment, for losing face, for sort of getting things wrong and mismanaging. And what they like about online communication is that there's a bit of a delay and a bit of time to think and you can kind of repair and make good an interaction that seemed to have gone wrong. And so I think it is striking that half of those in the survey said they feel more able to be themselves online than offline. Uh, and I think you know, it really is providing something that they couldn't get otherwise. What we want these findings to do is now to enter a debate about what is the best way of ensuring that children are appropriately prepared and that some of the um, most extreme kinds of content are managed so that children don't easily encounter them. Uh, and the real question is, you know, how much is that down to uh, giving children more skills, uh, which should come from parents or from teachers, and how much is it uh, a matter of how we manage the online environment and what internet service providers do and what social networking sites should do uh, just to um, manage the kind of interactions that they facilitate. There are things in all aspects of life, like being careful crossing the road, that you have to, uh, parents have to, um, if like pay attention that their children know about these things and inform them. But I hesitate to do, to do things to make them worry because potentially it, it creates more tensions, more anxieties. You get a sort of a, a panic about, you know, the internet is now as bad as the rest of the outside world. I am sure in the long run we will look back and say, um, of course the benefits of the internet are greater uh, as we um, have done for the book though um, you know, we can worry about some of the things that children read, and we always have, and some of the things on the internet are more extreme than anything they could ever read in a book. Um, 
but we also said for the book and we will say for the internet um, it's a matter of guidance and teaching and direction oh the conclusion definitely not is not no, turn the turn the internet off because it's ruining our children it's very clear from the study that um, that children are um, you know, they have a right number of uh, variety of skills in relation to the technology. They do know what to do. They do still need support. But um, if you take into account all the benefits and the opportunities that um, the internet offers in terms of learning, in terms of socializing, in terms of um, kind of entertainment and creativity, um, it's clear that those benefits outweigh the risks for the children and that it's a matter of making sure that they can navigate their, their way around this virtual world as well as we teach them how to navigate their way around the, let's say, real world or the offline world.